Hello, welcome. We are talking about utilitarianism and in the previous lecture we have discussed everything important pertaining to utilitarianism. You see, we discussed the important thinkers, for instance, Jeremy Bentham, John Stuart Mill. We have also discussed what exactly is the definition of utilitarianism, how is it a part of normative ethics, we've discussed how it is absolutely in contrast to or stark opposite to the concept that is the ethical theory by Immanuel Kant, which is deontology. So after doing all of these bits, oh, I think the app has crashed, but let's wait. All right, it's back. So after discussing all of these things, it is important so it was Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill, right? So these are the all important things that we've already discussed. In the previous lecture, I also told you something about the different kinds of utilitarianism. And I told you that there are nine of them in totality and I'd like to discuss with you uh, about these nines in a great detail. So this lecture, we'll be understanding the nine important kinds of utilitarianisms. Now the first one that we have before us is cross utilitarianism. Now you see, uh, these nine, there are a total of nine, okay? So, in short, we'll be understanding about the important thinkers pertaining to this philosophy, then important, you know, um, statements pertaining to this philosophy with examples. So, we will, we will be just discussing the brief analysis of all these nine. If we go into the details of it, firstly, that's not something mentioned in the syllabus. And also, it will, you know, it will be uh, too much because that's for the research level. Right now, we are just concerned with understanding these nine different kinds of utilitarianisms, their brief introduction, right? So let's get started. The first is gross utilitarianism. Now you see, gross utilitarianism, first thing that should come to your minds is that it is also called what? Quantitative utilitarianism. It is also called quantitative utilitarianism. It was introduced by Jeremy Bentham, okay? And according to this theory, according to gross utilitarianism, what's happening, the important statement pertaining to gross utilitarianism is that here all pleasures are alike. All pleasures are alike. There is no difference when it comes to pleasure, okay? Pleasure A, pleasure B, pleasure C, all these three are what? Alike in nature. And if you look at this, that all pleasures are alike, you can simply link it with this and understand why it is called quantitative utilitarianism. Okay. Now, according to gross utilitarianism, next important thing that you need to understand here is that an action is right or an action is moral if it produces what? If it produces pleasure. And by that logic itself, an action is is immoral if it introduce sorry if it induces or if it brings what pain or suffering as simple as that why because if you remember when we were discussing jeremy bentham i told you that jeremy bentham says that a human man or a human you know nature is basically dealing with two uh, two elements so these two elements that is pain and pleasure is all that you need to remember pain and pleasure okay this is what works us this is what moves us and an action will be immoral if it's bringing out pain and an action will be moral if it's bringing out pleasure i'm discussing this with you in very layman language so that the entire concept is clear okay now jeremy bentham like i told you is somebody who's associated with gross utilitarianism you need to understand that he believes that pleasure or utility Pleasure or utility has what? It has quantitative differences. It has quantitative differences. What do I mean by this? I simply mean that some pleasures are more pleasurable and some are less pleasurable. Is this clear? 
So this is an important aspect you need to remember about gross utilitarianism. Now, the things which are paramount or, you know, which are of real good importance for the exam's purpose is that you remember the different names to it, the founder behind it, what is the premise of this entire philosophy, and these are the things you need to remember. Similarly, let's now look into the second kind, that is refined utilitarianism. Now, you see, refined utilitarianism is something which was given to us by who? John Stuart Mill, right? Mill gave us refined utilitarianism. This is called gross, this is called refined, okay? Now, according to this theory, pleasures, that is all pleasures, are not alike. You see, we did here all pleasures are alike, just the opposite of it, that all pleasures are not alike. So Mill simply says that there are some pleasures which are more desirable, which are more desirable than the others. So quality is something that he emphasizes upon. What? Quality. Quality is something that he emphasizes upon. And if you remember, we discussed that he basically divides pleasure into two kinds. One is the intellectual pleasure and second is the bodily pleasure. If this is seeming new to you, I would request you watch the lecture where we discussed Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill in a great detail. We have talked about it. You see, the reason why I'm bringing this intellectual pleasure and bodily pleasure here is so that you understand that there are more there are some pleasures which are more desirable than the other. This is not to say that bodily pleasure is not giving us pleasure. Of course it is. But when it comes to intellectual pleasure, this is given more emphasis. This is given more importance in the philosophy of John Stuart Mill. Is this clear? So this is what you need to remember. Now, he also believed that pleasure or utility has what? It has quantitative differences. It has qualitative differences. For instance, some pleasures, he says, are intrinsically, intrinsically better than the other pleasures. Some are intrinsically better than the other ones. And you have to remember that when we're talking about John Stuart Mill, these kind of pleasures he associate with what? Intellectual pleasure and not bodily pleasure. So these are the important things you'll remember about refined utilitarianism. Firstly, it is by John Stuart Mill. The entire premise of this philosophy is that no, uh, all pleasures are not alike. They're quite different in nature. And the emphasis here is on what? It is on intellectual pleasure. Uh -huh.